of Tony Katane's sudden death broke on May the 8th, and out of respect to our great friend, we paused a moment here at Manic TV to let the shock sink in. She'd just become the newest member of the Manic team, and was really excited to bring you more Tawny's Tales from LA over the months ahead. We recorded with her on April 22nd for what would be her final UK interview. She had a great time that day, talking about her life and the Brits she so loved. Now, many of you have been asking when you can see the rest of that chat, and I know she'd have wanted you all to watch it. So, here now are some more Tawny's Tales. Right. Isn't it certain yeah. people have just, just got that kind of charisma and, and you know, you, you, you know that they come into a room without even seeing and you turn around and they're there. They've just got a sort of aura about them. I mean, can you think of anyone else like that that you've, that you've encountered, Tony? Or... I, I personally, um, <clears throat> I remember years, years ago, I was um, at a um, screening for a movie at Groman's Chinese theater and the after party was going to be at the uh, Roosevelt hotel across the street. I left the movie a little early, walked into the ballroom. There was nobody in there except for the sky. And the sky was about 20 feet from me. And that was, that was it. It was just him in this room and you could feel this electricity. And I was like, is there a light bulb out? Is there, you know, is, is something is something wrong with one of the outlets? Something's going on. And this guy turns around and he looks at me and I'm like, I don't recognize him. Um, but he just exuded this, this type of charisma. Well, um, about six months later, <clears throat> Thelma and Louise comes out and I recognize the face and it's Brad Pitt. Oh. And and I'm telling you, I have of, of all he's the only actor that I have met, and I've met tons like like you guys and all our rock stars that that had that had this incredible, incredible charisma that there was just absolutely no denying it. There was and he and like I said at that point, he wasn't even anybody. So he wasn't putting on airs. He just <clears throat> and I think still to this day, from what I hear, like what John was saying about Joe, is what you see is what you get with him. Um, and that's just it's so wonderful to hear. And it's great to hear that about Joe. It really is. I mean, I I've I like I said, I met him <clears throat> backstage with David. And, um, you know, meeting everybody and, and not getting any like, oh, my goodness, feelings. I was with my husband and Joe Elliott was making me go, oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, oh, oh, David, go to the restroom. David, leave for a second. <laughs> um, yeah. So so really, really, John, so nice. Thank you for telling me that story about him. What there a was, pleasure. There was one what a time. pleasure. Go Sorry, ahead. there was one time, another guy who completely surprised me. Um, I was on a flight. I got on a flight and I was going from um, Auckland in New Zealand back up to Sydney and then from Sydney, same plane, on to Los Angeles. And I got on it in Sydney and um, I was in 2A and 2B, this chap sits down next to me and he said uh, American chap and he said uh, you going all the way I said yep yep he said oh we get to know each other and he shook hands and uh, a bald chap um, very nice very well spoken very slim and um, he said hi I'm Jim I said hi I'm John and uh, we started talking about New Zealand wines and he was telling me about Cloudy Bay um, which is a remarkable white wine that they apparently he was telling me they only uh, export six pallets to the UK of this wine and the Queen takes three of them and <laughs> so that's why it's pricey because it's hard to get hold of and we spoke about wine and then the 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 cabin service director heard us talking and he said you know um uh, I know I know you're discussing wine I've got a really nice wine let's try this and we try that and we 
we flew up to Sydney and we watched the movie together because um, we shared the uh, individual, you know, screen thing that came out, the arm of the chair. And uh, we spoke about everything. We put the world to right and we had breakfast together. We fell asleep together. We took off from Sydney all the way up to L.A., just talking about the world and got on really, really well. And just as we're coming into land in L.A., um, he said, have you got transport booked? I said, yeah, 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 I've got I've got a car coming to meet me. How about you? He said, no, my manager, Peter Asher, is coming to pick me up. And I said, Peter, who used to be in Peter and Gordon? He said, yeah. And I said, what's your name? And it was James Taylor. No. And we'd, yeah, we'd been on the flight for 14 hours, and I promise you, I, did, I never put two and two together. We never spoke about music, and he was the most lovely, lovely man I've <laughs> ever met in my life. I mean, oh. just a true gentleman. He, he's very articulate, very knowledgeable about everything. He was, and I never clicked because the last time I saw James Taylor, he had loads of hair, you know, and I didn't realize he'd gone bald and I didn't put two and two together. Right, but right. Again, lovely surprise <clears throat> when you meet people like that. And they're a lot nicer than you expect. So nice, so nice. And, and, and ironically, he is another one of my heroes. Um, just, I mean, I mean, come on, you guys, like the songs, every song, I'm just, I mean, every single song that the man has written is just, if you, you, if you heard the song, it's one of those, his music is the type that if you hear the song, you can remember where you were the very first time you heard it. Yeah. Uh, just in, incredible, incredible musician. Um, and, and that um, must happen to you a lot in Los Angeles, Tony, because you must be always bumping into people because it's that mm -hmm. kind of place, isn't it? It, it? it is, it is. And, and but during the um pandemic, I moved down to Newport Beach, which is a beautiful place. And we, Kobe Bryant, lived just down the street from us, and that was, as you guys know, I'm Very the. Sad. Uh, just absolutely horrifying. So, so sad. And he was another guy who was who, what you, what you saw is what you, what you got just a wonderful, wonderful human being. Um, my ex-husband, my second ex-husband who was a, base, a baseball pay, player, six foot seven. And um, they, uh, when Kobe would have birthday parties for his kids the um you know Shaq and uh all, all all the guys would come down and i felt so sorry for the other husbands because they were left over on that side and only you had to be six foot seven and, and taller to hang with this crew over there <laughs> so um you know and plus uh, chuck was a um famous baseball player as well um but yeah it really tore up our city horribly. I mean, we, we moved down here um, and, I, and I, I can kind of speak for Kobe as well on this because we don't have paparazzi and we, we, do, we, we can live our lives and, and not, you know, it was, it's, not, it's not fun leaving your house and every time you leave, there's a camera following you. So living in Newport Beach is probably one of the top five, if not the top three nicest places to live in America. And um, yeah, and to have Kobe and every day you would see him. And he was just, just such a great guy. And, and it just, it tore our city apart. Absolutely tore us apart. It's so sad because, you know, uh, I was looking at the accident report, you know, and, and it, it makes it even worse to find out that it was actually pilot error that, you know, he yeah. pressed on when you should have turned back. And that's what made it even worse, really, because it was avoidable. It was avoidable. It was absolutely avoidable. And um, I'm kitty corner to his church, which was called the Queen of Angels. And he went there that morning, which was a Sunday morning at seven o'clock and the bells toll. Um, every morning at seven and at nine and I'll wake up and every single Sunday morning, the bells toll. 
and all I can, I hate to bring this down. I don't mean to be such a downer, but um, in a way it's, it, it made me sad for the longest time. But now when I hear the, bo- the bells, all I can think about is what a wonderful life, what a beautiful family and what a, what a great, great soul he was. Yeah, so. it's, a, it, it's a funny thing. I think in, in, certainly in the UK, I don't think people really truly get quite what a, what a big superstar, what an icon he, he was. Um, really? Did you guys, I mean... Well, we I, certainly I knew, know, knew him and know the name, but I mean, I mean, it's, uh, you know, but he, he was just so revered, wasn't he? And, uh, you know, he, he, he kind of transcended the sport, I think. He really um, did. 